Hi, my name is Hannah Buckner and welcome to Inside the Fairbanks at the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Uh, for the last few weeks, we've been showing you every Friday um, some exhibits that are in the planetarium. And today we'll be doing um, a look at one of the kind of little important things, um, well, one of the important um, exhibits that are um, part of the uh, Fairbanks like family collection, the actual Fair Fairbanks family. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's not going to be as long as it usually is, but it'll definitely be something that is cool to see. And um, Bo will have a really great story and background of the history of this piece. And um, I'm excited for you guys to see it. So let's Here get started. We have the pepper box pistol that was. Um, made between 1851 and 1854 by Robbins and Lawrence. Um, they were gun makers um, back in the 1800s um, out of Windsor, Vermont. Um, this pistol was owned by Erastus Fairbanks during his term as the Fairbanks governor in 1860 through 1861. And so this pistol is quite a beautiful piece of work, um, as is the box, um, the pistol, is made from rosewood, which you can see here on the handle. And um, there are two sides of the handle and it's connected by metal, which separates here and then has a um, bar. And then the two pieces of rosewood are actually connected by a screw. And then from this separation of the metal, you have another piece of metal, which is, um, barrel and um, this was really a, a truly beautiful piece of work. There are um, beautiful engravings on the um, metal portion of the handle as well as on the barrel and what was unique about this, this is actually the second edition of this pistol by Robinson Lawrence. Um, the way that you would load this is that you would um, use um, this, this is made of metal, and it would contain the powder for the gun, and you would take it, and there's a, a, a little handle, which is, well not handle, right here, there's a tab, which you would, um, you would pull it, and it's connected to a spring, and it would allow you to choose to release um, a certain amount of powder, and it would go in through the, um, the barrel right here into one of the five cylinders. So it's a five cylinder pistol. And then after you loaded the powder in, you would put in one of the bullets and then you would use, um, where is it? You would use this, um, it had actually two uses. So you would use the end to push the bullet all the way in. And then um, you would use the trigger to release it. Um, in addition to that, you have um, this, what kind of looks like um, a nutcracker. It was actually a um, mechanism to make create more bullets. So you would melt lead and then pour it into that little hole. And then as you would, as it cooled, you would open it up and then actually cut the nib off the top because there's a little nib so that you can have circular bullets. Um, and then you'd have more. And then in this box, um, which is important for the um, releasing mechanism of the pistol, there are little nubs that go onto um, the back end of the barrel so that um, inside there's actually a hammer that um, can move its position um, to one of the ends of the um, barrel, I mean the cylinders. And so, um, these nubs were important so that um, when the the hammer hit it, it could actually um, start the combustion of um, the powder and then send the bullet flying. And that is the pepper box pistol. Um, the box, which um, is quite lovely, um, it's got some dimension here, and it's got some uh, fabric padding. Um, inside the, the top and also inside the bottom um, with the different sections 
Um, it is made of mahogany, and in addition to having the pistol, what would have come with the box um, is the um, the bullet maker, the powder holder, and then um, this um, metal piece right here that helps you load the bullets as well as um, help um, spin the the barrel in order to be able to take it off and clean it um, so that you wouldn't have any residue left over. Um, we are unsure if this would have come with it, um, but um, Erastus Fairbanks had his own in here, so um, that definitely would have come from it. And yes, that is Erastus Fairbanks's pepper box pistol. Um, after this pistol was made, it would have been followed by um, the Colt pistol, which became more popular after this. So while this pistol was used for quite some time, it wasn't such a long use pistol, but you'll be hearing more about that soon. So that's it for today. Um, it was just that single exhibit, but it's definitely a significant um, exhibit that we have here at the museum. It's very special um, to the museum. It was special to the uh, Fairbanks family. And it also, as you'll find out in just a minute, how the history and the use of the pistol was actually quite important in um, U.S. history. And so I encourage you to um, take notes if you want as you listen to Bo. And um, I hope you enjoy the, the history of it. So Bo, on to you. Thanks, Anna. Um, so we're going to jump right in here, talking about this uh, this uh, very interesting pistol with some great history to it. Uh, I'm going to share my screen as I usually do um, to show you a few images to go along with this uh, this presentation. So um, here we go. So. Uh, this uh, very nice uh, example of a, a Robbins and Lawrence pepper box pistol was owned by um, Erastus Fairbanks, who you can see here, uh, two different images of, of him. Uh, you can see here, um, it says GOV Fairbanks uh, for Governor Fairbanks. He was governor of Vermont in, uh, for two terms. Uh, and at the time it was, they had one year terms. Um, he was governor first, he was the 21st uh, governor from 1852 to 1853, and then the 26th governor from 1860 to 1861. Um, it wasn't until 1870 that they um, moved, changed the term length to two years. Um, and uh, so anyway, he, he was governor uh, at the beginning of the Civil War, and um, he was the uh, one of three brothers, uh, along with um, Thaddeus and uh, Joseph Fairbanks, who uh, started the Fairbanks Scale Company, which obviously became um, very, very successful. And um, uh, they made all kinds of scales. They started with platform scales for weighing a variety of things, um, larger volumes of things, but made everything from postal scales to um, eventually train scales um, using a variety of innovative ideas. And um, because they were so successful they, and like all these really new ideas, they, um, I, I believe this is one reason why they, um, the Erastus was interested in this uh, type of pistol in, in particular. Um, and we'll find out why in just a minute. Um, so this pistol, um, you can see it's, uh, as Hannah said, the Handles are rosewood, the box is, the case is mahogany, um, has these nice um, filigree designs engraved on it, which was standard for this pistol. Um, and this one's in really good shape overall. Um, and um, it came with this uh, powder horn type um, container. Um, they also made their own. Uh, and embossed them with uh, the logo Robbins and Lawrence of Windsor, Vermont. And um, so you can see here they um, engraved uh, Robbins Lawrence on their the barrels and also Windsor, Vermont. 
And here on the bottom, it says Leonard's patent, uh, 1849, which was the, um, for George Leonard's patent of 1849, um, which uh, we'll get to in just a minute. But Robinson Lawrence um, had this building built uh, in 1846 um, down in Windsor, Vermont, uh, right on uh, what is now Route 5. And, um, they was expanded a couple of times. This front part was a, a an addition at one point, and um, this was a machine shop for making uh, guns, but also machines that made guns. And um, they uh, made this one, for instance. Uh, this is a rifling machine. Uh, right here is the cutter. It would move back and forth and rotate, and also. Um, got deeper and deeper each um, time um, until it got to the right depth through the rifling on the inside of the barrel, which gave the bullet a, a bit of a spin and made it more accurate. Um, but they uh, provided machines, not, they made, not only made machines for themselves to use, but they provided machines for other uh, gun manufacturers to use in the pre-Civil War era, such that a lot of uh, manufacturers of guns for the Civil War had one or more Robbins Lawrence machines in their um, their shops. Not only rifling machines, but milling machines and um, a number of other types of machines. Um, so moving on, uh, you can see here are the two patents that uh, George Leonard got on um, for this type of, of pistol. This here is the, are the drawings for the first patent of uh, September 18th, 1849. Uh, for the basic uh, design, you can see um, a lot of the different components here. It's very similar to, the look of it is very similar to um, the example of the pistol that we have. Uh, this is the hammer here, which was part of the um, design. It was. Um, enclosed in the, this portion of the gun rather than other pepper box pistols that were earlier that where it had it on the top and uh, the and also the other types of um, pepper box pistols the often the or very usually the uh, barrels rotated and in this case the hammer inside rotated and um, the nipples here for the percussion caps, which we'll see a little bit later too in one of the other images. Um, and um, here's the 1856 uh, patent, two pages of drawings, um, where you can see a little bit more detail um, of, the, of the gun. And it opens here so you can um, clean it and um, put the uh, caps on, the percussion caps on here. There was a five barrel um, pistol. Um, so here you can see that our pistol um, from the collections that Erastus owned, um, this little lever opened it up and here you can see the, the hammer that uh, came down on the caps here and provided the spark to fire the gun. Uh, the, it had a two part, um, uh, trigger this ring part um, cocked and rotated the uh, the hammer around, um, and then this part on the outside here was the actual trigger to fire the um, to release the, the hammer and fire the pistol. Uh, and you can see here the each one came with a, a wrench like this, which um, allowed you to open the or release the barrels and um, exposed the, the breech here, um, which actually I recently discovered was um, how it was intended to be loaded. You would pour the powder in here and then the, put the bullet in and then tighten the barrel back down and um, after you've put the, the caps on inside. Um, and um, the, each one also came with a, a bullet mold here for making new more bullets and I had a compartment in the case for caps. Um, you see this case here, um, it's the case that these caps came in and are the right size for the um, for this pistol. Uh, there were, I've read uh, 
two or three or four different uh, versions of this pistol, depending on what you count as a separate version. There were a couple of different calibers and uh, a couple of different overall designs, and uh, also the there were differences in um, the material used for the handle grips. The, the one we have is, um, again, rosewood. Um, let's see, going back here, right here at rosewood, some had ivory on them. And uh, so going back here. Um, and these uh, pistols were, like as Hannah mentioned, made uh, between 1851 and 1854. They uh, um, were the a new design of pepper box pistol that was very popular um, in the early 1850s and early to mid 1850s. Um, but also at that time, uh, Samuel Colt was and the Colt Manufacturing Company were um, coming up with some new innovative uh, designs and uh, for a different, a new type of gun called the revolver that um, many of us are familiar with. And that was, but the new design that was the revolver what made it easier to load and use the the pistol and um which were also um loaded in a similar way to this with the uh, powder and a, a shot uh, you know a, a bullet and then uh later on they you had the cartridges that you could load into the back um, very, very quickly and relatively. And um, so pretty quickly the Colt revolver pushed out the, or became much more popular than these pepper box pistols, um, which is why the, uh, even though they produced about 7,000 of these um, pistols, the pepper box pistols that Robinson and Lawrence made, um, and they were very popular, the Colt revolver, um, I believe because of ease of use, um, was uh, became more popular pretty quickly. And uh, one interesting thing is that uh, Franklin Fairbanks, who was Erastus's son and the founder of the Fairbanks Museum, owned a uh, pep, uh, Colt revolver, one of the earlier, not the very earliest, but a, a, one of the types that would have replaced the pepper box pistol. And we have his um, Colt revolver in the collections as well. Um, so I, I find that interesting that Erastus had the popular uh, gun of his time and um, the, his son Franklin um, had the, the um, next sort of most popular <laughs> pistol. Um, so uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting and um, again, as always, let us know if you have questions about uh, this uh, gun and the exhibit it's in or other questions, uh, you can contact um, Drew or uh, the museum uh, with, with those questions and we'll do our best to, to answer them or um, point you in the uh, right direction. So um, thank you very much.